do you have cheap Ikea furniture hanging around your house, but you don't have a ton of money to replace it? I am going to show you how to update your Ikea furniture to make it look way different and have a major makeover and you don't have to buy all new furniture. Stay tuned here on Bella Renovare. Stay tuned. If you guys are new here, my name is Cristana. I am the owner and creator of Bella Renovare by Cristana. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you guys are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell, and you'll get all the latest videos. Today we are going to be doing something that is kind of near and dear to my heart. I am part of a military family, my husband is military, and a lot of times we move around often, often, and Ikea has been a staple in my life, my friends' lives, a lot of people who are just first time homeowners, buying their new place, Ikea is, it's not, the best furniture but it's not the worst furniture and it's affordable and so a lot of people they have Ikea furniture in their house and you think to yourself it's Ikea furniture I can't change it I'm going to change your mind so today we are going to be making over this little dresser it's my friend's kids obviously as you can see but let me tell you something a little bit of a misconception about Ikea furniture a lot of times people assume that Ikea furniture is not solid wood, that it's just particle board. And that is true for probably half of it. That is not true for this piece. So this piece is solid wood. It's pine though. So Ikea uses a lot of pine for their furniture. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna pull this out. And you can see, so this obviously is not wood, but this is pine, this is solid wood. The front of this, the top of this, the inside of this, all of this is pine. And they, what they did is they painted over it with a white. And so we're gonna be able to actually sand the top down and bring out the wood because we wanna make this kind of a boho theme for my friend's daughter's room. So we're gonna be able to fix this up. We're gonna change the hardware. We are going to be painting it with the new silk line. We're gonna be using the color conch, which is, it's a blush pink color. If you use the original, Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint line, then T Rose is the comparable color to it. If you are using a different paint, you're gonna to wanna to use a blush pink color. I'm also going to be using a stencil, a more of a Southwest kind of boho stencil. So we'll be doing that as well. I'm going to replace the hardware probably with some wooden knobs to kind of pull in that whole boho feel. So as always, we are going to prep our feet piece first because this is solid wood, okay? I it's it's got more of a matte finish. It's not shiny and this is solid wood. So what I'm going to do is we actually have to fix this drawer over here and I'll show you how in a second. Uh, I love you Desiree, my friend who this this is hers, but tape is not the way to fix this. So I'm going to just I'm going to show you guys. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and start working on this. And if you've got Ikea furniture sitting around, get ready, because we're gonna be making it over. Because this is a pine dresser, I'm going to go ahead and strip off that factory finish that Ikea put on there with my five inch Surf Prep Orbital Sander. So you can just use whatever orbital sander that you have. I am using an 80 grit first. I'm gonna do an 80 grit and then I'll go up to a 100 grit, then I'll go to a 120 grit to smooth it out. But I need to get this off of here first. As you can see, there's a lot of dust going around. I brought this outside because I knew that that was gonna happen. I didn't feel like attaching my vacuum to it. So just get that finished off first and then we can go to the next step. The finish is completely sanded off. As you can see, it looks really pretty. It's pine. And now we're going to move on to prepping the rest of the piece. Do you remember that drawer I was talking about? Well, here it is. So we're gonna pull this out because right now it is 
taped together and that's probably not the best route to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it apart, remove the tape, get it so that everything is removed from the drawer. My next step is to use tight bond wood glue. I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue along the edge of that broken area right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to replace it back on there, on the drawer, and then I'm going to clamp it on to the drawer with my clamps. You need to make sure that you're putting two clamps on, one on each end. That way there's an equal amount of pressure holding the broken piece in. Once you have put your clamps on, you can go ahead and wipe that excess glue that's coming down with a paper towel. And then actually to secure it even more, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some brad nails going from the broken piece into the more solid piece. And you'll see exactly what I mean here in a second. If you have a brad nailer, you can use that as well, but we're gonna do this by hand. These are just thin nails that you want to make sure you get them centered, and then you're just going to hammer them in, and these are small enough that they will not splinter the wood, but they're also strong enough that they will hold that piece in for a long time. I added about four of the brad nails equally spaced apart, and that way I knew that I had the double protection of the nails and the glue. I let the drawer sit for a few hours just to make sure that everything was good and dry. And now I'm going to take all of the hardware off of this piece because we're gonna be replacing the hardware. As with every single piece that I do, I'm going to go ahead and clean the surface of this really well with Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. I take the white lightning and I pour it into a bucket of warm water, make sure you're wearing gloves, and then I use my hands to stir it around to dissolve it, or I will use my rag to do that as well. But right here, I'm just using my hand. Because I removed all the hardware, I now need to open the drawer. So I like to use a screwdriver and just open it to the pre-existing holes since I didn't plug them. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go over the entire piece with my white lightning. After you're done going over your piece with your white lightning, you wanna go over it again with a clean water, clean warm water and a clean rag that does not have any of the TSP or the white lightning on it. And that way you can get any residual off and that way you won't have any adhesion issues. Now that our piece is prepped, I'm going to go ahead and paint. So I'm gonna be using the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint in Conk. And again, you can see the T-Rose is very comparable. When I'm painting with mineral paints, I always use a dry synthetic brush. So as opposed to your chalk based paints or your clay based paints, you wanna make sure that your brush is actually dry when you first start painting if you are using a mineral paint.
I'm gonna create a textured stencil, and with that, I'm gonna use the Baja Gray for the Silk All-in-One. And here you can see that Driftwood in the original line is very comparable to that as well. I'm going to take the actual drawers out. I'm only gonna do the top four drawers, so I'm gonna take the drawers out first and then do my mixture. So you need your whatever paint you choose to use. We're using Baja Gray. You need your Sea Spray Texture Additive. You're going to need a mixing cup a cheap chip brush, and then I use tongue depressors for my stirring. There are actual directions and measurements on the sea spray bag, but that's not what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna pour some of the paint into my mixing cup, and I'm going to add just a little bit of sea spray at a time. That way I can get the consistency that I want. So as you watch me pour this in, I'm going to mix it up, and I'm actually going to scoop it up with my tongue depressor I'm going to keep mixing and adding a little bit at a time until this mixture actually does not pour off of my tongue depressor so I can scoop it up and it actually won't come off of it. It won't drop off of it. And you'll see that at the very end. Once my mixture is where I want it to be, I'm gonna lay down the stencil. This is just a Southwestern type stencil to go with the boho theme. And I'm gonna make sure that it's centered. I'm going to do the same pattern on each drawer. So I'm gonna make sure it's centered on each drawer. And then I'm gonna just take my mixture, my cheap chip brush, I stipple it and I hold on to the stencil and that way I don't have any bleed through underneath. It will be a lot easier for me to use this one when it's thicker. Some people like to use adhesive to put their stencils on. Sometimes people like to tape it. Because this is a thicker consistency, I don't, I shouldn't have as much problem with the bleed through underneath. Once I am done adding my texture, I'm going to go ahead and pull the stencil up and I'm just going to replace it back into its place. So I'm going to pull each drawer out individually and put them back when I'm done to allow them to dry. I am a big fan of using colored waxes to stain raw wood. So these knobs are raw wood and I'm gonna use the Grunge Gray Bestang Wax to stain them. And what I'm doing is I'm applying the wax onto the wood first, and then I'm going to wipe the excess wax off and that will pull back most of the wax and you'll still see that there is a gray color. Then I'll come back in about 15 minutes and I'm going to go ahead and buff these and that way I know that the wax is nice and into the wood grain. This wax is water-based, so you have to come back 15 to 20 minutes after you pull off the ex excess wax. 
in order for it to buff properly. It's not like an oil-based based wax where you can wait a day or hours. You have to go back 15 to 20 minutes after to buff it. In previous videos, you've seen me use the white wax to stain the top of pieces. This time I'm gonna use the grunge gray on the top just like I just did on the knobs. And I'm going to apply this on the entire piece. Now there are some times where people are say, you know, it's gonna take a lot of wax. It actually doesn't and I show you what is left. So I had already opened this and I used it for something else. So it wasn't a brand new can. I'm going to take shop towels and I'm going to wipe off all of the excess wax and I show you on there too, you see that there's wax that comes off on the rag on the shop towel and that's normal. Then you're gonna wait 15 to 20 minutes you're going to go back, I use a microfiber cloth at that point, and I buff it out. You will still get a little bit of wax coming off on your microfiber towel. That's not a big deal. You, it's, it's normal, you wanna see that. So you can go in circles, go vertical, go horizontal, but what you're wanting to do is buff this wax into your piece. Now, I know that back in the day, it used to be wax is last, but that is not how it works with Dixie Bell's products. Their wax is water-based, their top coats are water-based, and they have a proprietary formula and they've made it to where they work hand in hand. So you could do wax first, then top coat, top coat or wax, either way. But the key is to make sure that you put the wax on exactly like I'm showing you. That way it's nice and buffed in and it dries. While I'm letting the wax dry for a few days, I'm going to go ahead and just put my hardware back on. So we're putting those wooden knobs just right back on the piece. I went over the piece about 24 hours later and used my surf prep and used a fine grit sandpaper. So you'd wanna use like a 220. And I just went over it to do some light distressing. So this paint distresses really, really nicely. Again, I waited about 24 hours afterwards so that I knew it was nice and dry and set, but I wanted to add a little bit of distress to this. And so I went ahead and distressed a little bit. So you want to wait until your wax is completely dry, so about 36 to 72 hours, and then you can go back and you can actually put a clear coat over top of it for extra protection. I'm going to put gator hide over the top of this. The first thing I always do is stir it really, really well, and then I pour my gator hide actually onto another paper plate. I always like to use my blue sponge with my gator hide and you'll see what I'm doing here. So I pour it on the paper plate and this allows me to get the blue sponge to evenly sit on that gator hide. I wipe it off on the edge and then I put my sponge down on the surface and allow it to almost suction onto that surface. 
and I just take my fingers and I pull it lightly. I don't go back and forth. I go from one end to the other. If I feel like I have to go over it again, I go from one side to the other. So you don't want to start in the middle and then work your way down. You want to start at the very end and work your way all the way to the other end. And then this will allow you a streak free finish. All right, everybody, so this piece is done. If you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Also, remember in the description below, it's got links to get all the products that are in this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I cannot believe that this is an Ikea dresser. Crazy. So until next week, I will see you guys later. I thought that we had something special. I thought I handled this so well. Intentions, but somehow it came to an end. I was looking.